On October 10, 2002, ULI Los Angeles, a district council of the Urban Land Institute and the USC Lusk Center for Real Estate, convened nearly 300 Southern Californian leaders to undertake an audacious task. Reality Check on Growth, an unprecedented envisioning exercise, gave regional stakeholders an opportunity to collaborate and creatively address the looming issues of projected growth in Southern California. This envisioning exercise has the support and cooperation of several forward-thinking organizations in Los Angeles. My name is Mark Pisano. I'm the Executive Director of the Southern California Association of Governments. On behalf of all the organizations who provide, put on this event, we invite you to envision the future of Southern California, where you think growth should occur, what quality of life you desire, what economic opportunities we should provide. This exercise will change the way you look at Southern California. You will appreciate the enormous challenges that we face, challenges that seem almost insurmountable. But with your input, your creativity, and your suggestions, we will in fact define a Southern California that works for all. The rules and format of the exercise are designed to force the participants to face and plan for the future. So the first question is, well, how many new arrivals are there? And we're going to ask you to work with the number of six million new residents in the Los Angeles metro area. Part of the realization is that this six million growth is not necessarily an influx of population, but that's growth from within, with people having kids. But it represents a 33% increase in the population over the next 20 years. So if you think we're crowded now, we've got a lot more people coming here. In this visioning exercise, we're going to ask you to address the following questions. Where will we put the anticipated growth in regional population? No less than the future of economic growth and quality of life in our region is at stake. Each table of guests will now start their process of discussing, planning, and placing Southern California's projected new residents. The organizers deliberately grouped the guests in a diverse fashion. For instance, environmentalists, developers, and social activists are included at each table, and they must find agreement on where we might locate the homes and workplaces for the coming six million. We have a very mixed group, but a qualified group, uh, to help uh, figure out where uh, six million people, which is an assumption for purposes of this exercise, but it seems like a reasonable assumption to work with. Where will those persons 20 years from now be living and working and how long will their commutes be? Each table was given an assortment of colored chips. Each color represented a specific number of homes or jobs in different land use densities. These chips will be arranged on the maps and then taped down once the participants have agreed on the placement. The initial and possibly most difficult work is for all opinions to be expressed and considered. Let me just take an example out of Ventura County. SOAR was passed with the promise of density. They don't want density. It's absolute baloney. They don't want it. And they're fighting it. Every elected official is fighting density. Uh, I think the probability that we're going to be able to push a lot of density into areas that don't want it isn't very good. I think that we need more verticality and that we need more density. When public officials have to make decisions, they're going to be aware of the point of view of others that are involved in that decision and are just not going to be, be pushing one point of view. While each group had to place six million residents in the form of chips, they were allowed to do limited trading between the low, medium, and high density chips to create what they felt would be the best possible use of land and transportation resources. The banker keeps track of the trades and keeps the overall population numbers consistent. There was no way we could put all those yellow chips on the map and it was hardly any discussion at all about going to higher density right away. It wasn't a lot of argument or whatever. We clearly understood that that was one of the uh, solutions that yet uh, has been be really adequately addressed but uh, quite honestly, we went to that, uh, traded our chips in uh, right away. Thank you. I assume everyone's finished. If, uh, if you have a few uh, high-density chips left over, I don't know, just uh, stick them on Catalina or something, but they have to go somewhere. So. While the guests adjourned to lunch, the maps were gathered up and taken to the computer facility for tabulation.
Numbers were recorded and double-checked, and then taken for computer entry. The computers have been programmed to reduce and format the data for all forms of comparisons and analysis. And so now we're looking at what everybody did as a group. What I did is I took my grid cells and I just added up where those six uh, million people were going to go. Uh, of the six million people, uh, LA's destined to get half, right? And uh, Riverside's destined to get about 20%. Can we go forward? So we can see down there on the south coast, uh, there's a cell there that ranked eighth in terms of population growth and it ranked 20, 22nd in terms of job creation. Uh, but there are lots of places around that map where, where there's good agreement and other places where uh, there's some substantial differences. Uh, another good place is Palmdale, uh, ranked 17th in terms of uh, population growth, but it ranked uh, third in terms of job growth. This is a moment to set the compass anew. Working together, we must then recapture control of our fate. Just have another point that also remember that every person at the table has an equal voice. Even the, uh, the relatively shy people versus the more aggressive, just remember that everyone has an equal voice. The common denominator of local politics and land use is driven by fear, and that fear is based on fear of change. Neighbors, and that when one city chooses not to accept its responsibility for building housing, it really creates a burden on other cities. County average, and I would like to look at a method by which opportunities are evenly distributed, and those people that are that have limited resources are not going to find. And I think that's where we are right now in terms of the smart growth movement in California. Not whether we should do it, but how we do it, and that's what we learn from having all stakeholders at the table. But I have to say that my definition of smart growth is what everybody's for until someone tries to do it. And that may be the result of having been an elected official for a long time. The real trick is going to be facilitating it in a way that makes people feel comfortable, informed, engaged, respected. Long-range regional planning can be difficult to grapple with. Organizations like USC Lusk Center for Real Estate and Urban Land Institute have employed this exercise to bring fresh energy and awareness to the issues. Uh, our committee proposes that the state as a policy foster regional planning on a comprehensive basis, very much along the lines of the exercise that was taking place here this morning, that would designate and develop long-term plans for areas where growth would occur, and particularly smart growth, higher density growth, and also set aside on a long-term basis those areas that will be conserved and where development will not occur. If we're going to address any of the issues that, that are going to be uh, raised because of this growth, we're going to have to have a process like this, which again brings all of the stakeholders to the table and gives them the opportunity to understand the issues, understand the problem, and work together on, on reaching some sort of consensus or agreement as to what the solutions are. And then once that is done, uh, then there's going to have to be the political will to bring about the changes to implement what the visiting session has, has developed.